We have blackberries, strawberries. Beyond Mike Anderson runs Sundog Specialty Crops in Sunbury. He's been a certified organic farmer for more than a decade. Each year we see, for the past 10 or 12 years, 15, 20 percent growth in the demand for organic produce. And this is a market that's not being met. There are fewer than 500 organic farms in Ohio, but the numbers are increasing every year, and it isn't easy. Organic farming is overseen by federal rules established between 1990 and 2002. It sets production standards for earning an organic label. The foods have to be produced and handled without the use of synthetic chemicals. They cannot be grown on land where prohibited substances have been used in the past three years, and they have to be grown in compliance with an organic plan approved by a certifying agent. That means Mike can't use chemicals chemical herbicides, pesticides, or fertilizers. We can use um, legumes, clovers, and vetch to provide nutrients because those are natural forms of fertilizer. We can use lime, which is mined from the ground, or other kind of mined minerals or rock powders to provide nutrients. A chrysanthemum derivative makes a natural insecticide, and in the greenhouse, Mike uses ground fish powder to give the plants nitrogen. That stinks. A lot. In place of a chemical. This soybean powder with molasses is a good fertilizer. The rules are stringent enough that Mike could lose his certification for something as simple as an oil drip from the tractor. Organic livestock and dairy producers have similar rules. The organic milk cartons say the cows have not been treated with hormones, but it also says there's no difference in milk from treated cows. The whole process is, is verified by an independent inspector. Mike agrees with nutritionists that there isn't much nutritional difference between organic and non-organic foods, but he sees organic farming and eating as a healthier way to treat the environment and our bodies. Marshall McPeak, NBC4.